We have reason to praise Him. We are alive. We have another opportunity this morning to say, Lord, we pray you and we love you. Are you going to do that this morning? Amen. Amen. Let us do that. I'm going to open prayer for us. And after that, I'm going to invite you to really get into lifting your voice to worship Him this morning. Let us pray together. Father God, what a privilege this morning we have to simply come into your presence. Thank you that we, we don't have to come to impress you. We just simply come to be in your presence. And in that being, we want to exalt your name, praise you, magnify you. Because we love you. We are grateful for yet another morning, another day added to our lives here on earth, Father. And we want to honor you for that. We want to praise you for that. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy that are new every morning. Be glorified as we worship. As people are coming into the house this morning with the Spirit, we are calling them in. We are saying, come in the name of Jesus. We are calling them in this morning to say, we need to get together. We need to say to the Lord that we love you, Father. Be glorified this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Just turn to somebody, good morning. Say for a good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Nice to have you in a, in a place of worship this morning. Go share a little love with people around you. Amen. to
bless you. Good morning. How are you doing? Wonderful. I'm so glad you are with us this morning. Great to have you in the place of worship. Are you good? Yes. You're glad the winter has arrived. Finally, in the last, uh, we thought the wind has gone and then this morning it shows up, unexpected. What a wonderful morning, what a great day. I just want to, just, just bear with me for a minute here, yeah, I think this thing, I'm, I'm, just, just turn me off on the monitor at the back please. Hallelujah, I don't want to hear myself behind me. Like in the Bible you, you find they say that and the Lord, voice of the Lord came behind someone. I don't want my voice behind me, it kind of gets me a little bit. Are you, are you ready for the word this morning? Amen. I truly have a word that I need to share with you. And uh, the word that I have to share with you is not one of my favorites. Because if you know me well, you will know that I, I like to encourage you. To tell you how great and how good you can be if you do what the God Lord has called you to be. This morning I am going to come from a different angle. And I also absolutely know and believe that what I want to share with you is what God has for us in this house this morning. Because we are a family, and when we are family, we do life together. Uh, we sometimes make mistakes. This is very loud in my ears. There's something, can we just get this really right, please? Something is very loud in my ears. Let me just switch this thing off at the back. Maybe now, better or not? Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, that was all behind me. Good. Um, apology for the sound. We had a desk in for service uh, this week and we got it back a little bit late and we, uh, we might have a bit of a challenge with it. Our Facebook viewers, welcome. Great to have you with us. We are glad that you are with us and joining us. But for you who are in the house this morning, if you are here for the very first time, we want to welcome you. We want to say thank you for choosing Petrolong Church this morning as your church of uh, choice for this morning. And uh, we want to give you a gift pack if you are here for the first time. So for us to know where you are, for us to give you that gift pack, we need to, we're going to ask you to raise your hand just now. But don't worry about the raising of the hand. It's really just to get the gift pack to you. We won't do anything else to you if you show yourself this morning. So who is here for the first time this morning in this house? Anybody? Anybody? Any visitors? Yes, there's somebody in the back there. Welcome, there's somebody in the front of that side. Welcome, great to have you with us. We appreciate the fact that you came. Uh, do visit us again though. Because uh, no two services at Betchelum are the same. It's every Sunday is a different uh, service. So please join us again. You will find in your gift bag is also a card. Just fill in that card for us. And at the end of the service, we would like you to put that card for us in the offering. So we can make contact with you and just find out how can we serve you better. That's what it's all about. If you are a mother, you have a baby with you, we, we always ask you to sit on that side of the house. Uh, we have a mother's room on that side. If you need to go and slip into the mother's room, you can do so. Um, in the mother's room, there's a television, and we relay the, the message via camera to that television, so you will not miss out on anything. So what happened on Friday? Did the schools close? So you must be really excited to have the kids home for the next three weeks. Drive your nuts. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's great to it's great that we have a, it's a bit of a winter break. It's always nice to, to have it like that. Pray with me for the word this morning. Father God, as we come this morning to share your word, we know that your word brings forth life. And it often brings us before a choice. And we know that the choices we make will, will, will bring life or it will bring death. But this morning we want to choose life. And therefore we pray this morning in the name of Jesus that as we choose this morning we will choose wisely. We will choose life in Jesus' name. We pray that your name be glorified. We pray that you be exalted. I pray Father God that your anointing will be upon me because I know your word is already anointed. I pray for open ears, open hearts to receive what you have for us. We pray that ultimately at the end of this day, we will take a step closer to you. And we thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Good, open your Bibles with me. We are in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 15. I am titling this sermon, Kill or Be Killed. It sounds very bad saying that here in southern South Africa with the horrible crime rate that we have. It sounds really bad. Kill or be killed. Uh, it's almost as if we are talking about what's happening in our country. Uh, but I want to talk to you this morning about if you don't kill something, that something might kill you. And I'm talking, when, I, when I'm talking to you this morning, I'm talking to me too. I just wanted to know this. When I say you, I mean us. Uh, we are all in the same boat. We are in the same family. We serve God together. We all want to get to heaven when we die. Isn't that so? Yes. Amen? Yes. Do you guys still believe in heaven? Yes. You should believe in heaven. That's where we go when we die on this earth. Because this time, this life here is very short compared to eternity. That's what the Bible teaches us. If we do not serve God, sadly, we will not go to heaven. We will end up in hell. Separated from God for eternity as well. And we are living in a time where people are mocking the fact that there is life after death or there's death after death. It's as if when you say or speak about the place called hell, where are you from? People think you're completely crazy. But it's a reality. I want you to know this. I said to a young man one day when he was uh, uh, many years ago, I was kind of new in ministry. And I remember this young man after Sunday service said to me on a Monday, you would like to come and see me. I was so excited that I thought, wow, the sermon might have touched him on Sunday. So he walks into my house. We were living in a movie at the time. Walks into my house and he starts asking me questions about what I preached on Sunday. And I thought, wow, this guy's really interested. But as I continued to explain to him, I realized he's not here to get answers. He's here to challenge what I said. And, uh, and he would continuously, when I said, talk about, spoke about God, he said, yeah, but how do you know God really exists? And how do you know that Jesus really rose from the dead? And how do you know this? And how do you really know this? Except for reading it in the Bible. And he started to challenge me. And at the end of the day, that I would answer him this way, I would answer him that way. But every time he would slip this way, he would slip that way. And at the end of the day, I said, you know what? You are really wasting my time. But before I'm going to ask you to leave my house, I want to say this to you. And that's what I want to say to you this morning as well. I said to him these words. I said to him, um, you know, if God is not real like you, you say he's not real. There is no God. And there is no Jesus who died, and there's no heaven, and there's no hell. If that is true, then I lose absolutely nothing. Because of following the principles of the word makes me living a better life there. And if we both die, we go and we die like dogs and we are just dead. I have not lost anything, and you have not lost much. But say that I am speaking the truth. And say that there is a God, and there is a Jesus who died, and there is a grave, and there is heaven, and there is hell. And we both die. You have a major problem, my friend. Because then you will go to hell. And I said to him these words, the risk is just too great to take, to not serve God. I'm saying that to you this morning as well. You might be, you might be involved with people, you might live in a, in a household and involved with people and colleagues and friends that do not serve God. And you might look at their life and you start wondering, should I even continue serving God? I'm here to tell you, you should. Listen to me, you should, you cannot give up on your faith and believing in God because the risk is too great. Because death comes like this. It does not ask if you are ready. It doesn't come through a long seatbelt that you can prepare for it. You can get in your car and drive to Pretoria and never make it to get it. You can die on the way there. You hear what I'm saying? The risk is just too great to not serve God. Because eternity has no end. We're going to end up in hell, it will be for eternity. We're going to end up in heaven, it will be for eternity. So we need to make sure that we continue serving God. We continue applying the word of God in our lives. We can't take the risk. You know, uh, I'm just speaking now as the Holy Spirit leads me. I still want to read out of the word. Um, there was this man on an airplane. And the... Uh, the flight attendant came to me and she said to him, Listen, sir, we just want to give you a, a parachute. Please put it on. It will give you a comfortable ride. So he puts the parachute on. The only guy on the plane puts the parachute on. And after a while, he realizes this does not give me a comfortable ride. In fact, it's really uncomfortable. I am very uncomfortable in this seat. While all the people around me are sitting back, oh, they're really enjoying the flight and they're having a great time. And it's really uncomfortable. 
So he decides, you know, this is nonsense. Let me take it off and just throw it down because it does not make my flight better. That is the one scenario. But listen to this. Just another scenario, same situation. Flight attendant comes up to the man and says, Sir, this plane is broken down. Please keep this on. We only have this one. Grabs hold of it, put it on. It's really uncomfortable. But do you think it takes it off now? I don't know. Now he keeps it on. It, all the other guys think, ah, what? Plane the will never go down. But it is going down. And I'm saying to you today, this plane is going down. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm saying to you this morning, this plane is going down. And if you're wearing a parachute that can save you, his name is Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God, you better keep that one on. You better not take him off because it's becoming uncomfortable. Because you're being mocked at work and you're being, people say things to you and you're starting to doubt if it's worth going on. I'm saying to you this morning, you better keep that shit on. Because this, place, this plane is going down without a doubt. You're hearing me this morning. Do not take it off because of the discomfort it causes. Because serving God will give you discomfort. Believe me at all. Many people will not agree with you. Because God is requiring of us to sometimes stand when everybody else is sitting down. He's asking you to carry on when it seems like there's no hope. But He says to you, I want you to carry on. To carry on and believe me and trust me and serve me in spite of the circumstances. Do not give up on God, because He will never give up on you. You hear what I'm saying? Somebody here need to hear what I'm saying this morning. Because you think playing with sin, you think not just being mediocre is good enough, it's not good enough. We need to be serious in our relationship with God the Father. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Read with me. 1 Samuel. Open your Bibles with me, please. I'm in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel 15. I'm going to read from this one. I'm going to read a lot this morning. I'm going to read the story and then speak. Read and speak, so stay with me. Samuel also said to Saul. I just want you to know, if you don't know who this is, Saul is the first king of Israel. Samuel is the prophet who God raised up and he anointed Saul as the first king. He also anointed David as king after Saul. Samuel the prophet also said to Saul, which is the king of Israel, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now I just wanted to explain to you what this means. Amalek, from, um, Amalek is a nation, it's a group of people called the Amalekites. And since Israel moved out of, the, out of Egypt, out of slavery, in, on their journey to the promised land, you remember they took 40 years to get to the promised land. On that journey, the Amalekites would continually attack Israel on their way to the promised land. Even when they were in the promised land, when they possessed the promised land, they would continuously attack them like in this case. Again, attack them, attack them. Now God comes and says to Saul, you know what, I've had enough of these Amalekites. Because from the day that you came out of Egypt, now Egypt speaks of our time when we were in darkness, in slavery. And God said, I called you out of slavery, out of darkness, into my glorious light. Now Amalek, the Amalekites have been harassing you continuously as you have been growing. And obviously this speaks of the devil. Amen? Are we getting it? Speaks of the devil harassing us continuously on our journey. And then he says this to Saul. When you, when you came out of it, now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. And do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. That's heavy. Kill or be killed. Kill or be killed. If you don't kill certain things in your life, that thing will come back and kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If we don't deal with certain issues in our lives, that thing will come back and will kill us. We need to kill it before it kills us. Now he says, utterly destroy them. All that they have, and do not spare them, but kill both men and women, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Does that mean everything? Yeah, it means kill everything. 
jump with me, we go to verse 7. And Saul attacked the Amalekites, he did it, from Havilah all the way to Shur, which is east of Egypt. He also took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive. Did he take him alive? How people do what did God say? Kill. He took him alive. Okay. He probably has a plan. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good, and were unwilling to utterly destroy them. But everything despised and worthless, that they utterly destroyed. Can we see what happens here? God says, destroy this. And then they said, first of all, they, they said, spare Agag, which is the king who gave all the commands that they should be attacked. They just said, ah, let's give him a break. How stupid is that? How stupid is that? So is the king, he thought, ah, let me not be hard on the king. Let's keep all the others, but not the king, because like I'm a king too, I understand. So he's not going to kill the king. They kept the best of the sheep, the best of the oxen, the best of the fat things, and they were unwilling to destroy them. Unwilling. You see, the problem is this. When God says to destroy the things in our lives that we know should be in our lives, we decide, I know God, I shouldn't really be doing this. I shouldn't be really having this in my life. But there's a benefit in it for me. So the things that, that benefited them, they decided not to kill them. But the things that was worthless in their life, they decided those things, yeah, yeah, yeah. there we will be obedient. Because there's no benefit in me for those things. So those I will destroy, those sinful things in my life, I will kill them. But the things that I can benefit from, I will just kind of keep them, hang on to them a bit longer. The things that can benefit me financially, like being involved in corruption. If we just hang on to that, I know I'm born again. I know I committed my life to Christ. I know He's asking me to live a, a holy life. But I just want to hang on to that corruption bit a little bit longer. The pride that with some people do. Amen. And when things really go bad, we run to God, oh Lord, please help me. Please pray for my business. Really? You should have killed the AK. Or we think. It's really nice to go and, uh, and, and look over the fence because the grass seems greener on the other side. When you're a married man and you think it's okay to have the benefit of an, an, an affair that should not be there. Hello? Do you know what I'm talking about? The things that can benefit me, the things that I enjoy, I'm not going to kill them more. Because I kind of like them. The rest, I don't think, oh, those are so bad, I'm worried about. You see, the thing is that you don't kill will ugly kill you at the end of the day. Yes. Let's get back in the word. Listen to what it says. They were unwilling to utterly destroy them, but everything despised and worthless, that they utterly destroyed. Verse 10. And the word of the Lord came to Samuel, saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandment. You see, when we don't follow His commandments and don't perform His commandments, what God sees is we don't follow Him anymore. We turn back from following Him. Read with me verse 13. Verse 13. Then Samuel went to Saul and Saul said to him, Now Samuel come to Saul, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandments of the Lord. What the moment. Can you see what Saul does here? As Samuel walks in, he said, Bless of the Lord, hallelujah, I have done, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Did he? No. He did not. But Samuel said, What then is the bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? So Samuel wasn't there. He walks in. Saul meets him. He says, uh, you know, I, I see this thing sometimes in my life as well. People will greet me. And a pastor, how are you? Oh, God is good. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. That's what Saul does here with Samuel. Because he thinks this will impress Samuel. But what does Samuel hear? He hear, Stuff. We can't. It was at the worst time 
that you do not want that sheep to play, man, it's going to do it. <laughs> the time that you don't want that horse to say, it's going to do it. Trust me, it will. At the time when you think it's not going to bite you in the behind, it's going to do it. And then he says, so what is this that I hear? What is this? And uh, Saul said, verse 15, they have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God. The rest we have utterly destroyed. Can you see how late this guy is? He cannot even take responsibility as the leader of the group. He was the leader. He was the king appointed. Now he says, no, it's them. It's not me. The people decided that is what they want. I'm going to say something that some of you might not like. You can't go on what the people want. Because people are like sheep. You know, sometimes we think when Jesus said, Oh, these are my sheep. We think it's really nice. It's kind of an insult. <laughs> because sheep just follow. Do you know that if you see a sheep in the Karoo and it walks there and it just, and, and one of these little bushes, the storm bushes, hooks it on the side and it can't go, it will just stand there. It will just stand there until it dies right there. That's what the sheep does. It just follows commands. Now hear what I'm saying. That is why the church is in the condition that it is. Because there's leaders. Hear me today if I say this. There's people like Saul that will say, but what the people want is what I want to give them. If the people will be drawn, if I do a nice show up here and do all these tricks in church, if they come by their thousands, they're not going to do it. But I'm telling you this morning, I'm not here to make you happy. I'm here to tell you I want you to get to heaven. I want you to be saved. I want you to, to start living a life that is not just involved with sin and, just, and corruption and all these things that people are getting involved in. Are you hearing me? I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to tell you this morning, we need to make choices in life. To make sure that our lives are in that where God wants us to be. I'm not trying to make you happy. I do not want to be in heaven one day and think, goodness, should I not have said something that Sunday? Because that brother, that sister, I don't see them yet. I want you to be in heaven when you die. I want you to make it there. I want to warn you this morning that the devil is out to get you. The Amalekites is out to kill us. And we need to be awake. And we need to say, Lord, I want to destroy them. I want to get these things out of my life. Hear this. <laughs> Saul comes and he says, uh, uh, the people, the people wanted it. That's what they wanted. Samuel said to Saul, be quiet. And I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And they said to him, speak. So Samuel said, when you were a little boy in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are Consume. You see what the problem is with us, even in the church. What we often do is we get used to sin. We make it part of our lives. We will actually, uh, when we commit our lives to Christ, we will immediately leave this thing, let go of that thing. Ah, let's just hang on to the oxen a little bit. Let's just hang on to the sheep a little bit. It's just hang on a little bit to, to unforgiveness. Hello? It can, it, can, it can make us miss the mark. Let's just hang a little bit on to that hatred, that racial things that I do. Just hang on to them a little bit longer. Just, just hang on to that, that, that drug thing that I have, that addiction. Just hang on a little bit longer. But you see, it's a fox. It's a sheep. It will come out at this time that you don't want it to come out. So uh, God says we need to utterly consume them. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? Well, I was like, really, why, my son? Why? I trusted you. And Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Can you believe this guy is so stupid? He still does not see it's him. It's the people. He says, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. You see, it's not me, Lord, it's my wife. She gives me no sex. So that's why I'm pulling around. Pfft. Rubbish. 
Sorry for that. It just slipped out. But it's true. Don't blame others for your sin. The choices you make is the life that you live. The choices that I make is the life that I live. I can't blame my wife, my kids, my boss, my employees, nothing. I choose what I'm going to do with my life. And if somebody else in my life is unfaithful, it doesn't mean I must be unfaithful too. Hello? Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? And Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission and which the Lord sent me and brought back Agag, key of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people, ah, they took off the blood the sheep and the oxen, the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice to the Lord, our God in Gilgal. But we're going to sacrifice, Lord. Lord, if, uh, if that deal comes through that I know I'm doing corrupt, I will die on it. You know, the slots I'm playing, Lord, the gamble thing, I know I shouldn't be doing it, the love of money is the root of the evil, but if you make me big, Lord, I will sacrifice it. I will die. No. I've heard people say these things. I'm not lying. If I get that job, Lord, then I will do this. Then I will be faithful. Oh, So Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Do we really think God cares about, I will tithe if I, if, I, if I get the money that I'm asking you for the Lord. Although I know I'm stealing and I'm robbing and I'm crooked. Do we really think God needs my money? Hello? Everything that I have belonged to Him already. Do I really think I can impress Him to say, but I will sacrifice some of it. As the Lord a great delight in burnt offering and sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to heed than the fat of rams. So this is such a powerful scripture. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Even if we sacrifice, even if we sacrifice but we don't obey the Lord, we can stand and worship every Sunday. It doesn't mean much. But if we obey the Lord and start killing the Amalekites in our lives, getting rid of the things that are separating us from becoming that person that God wants us, then we will obey the voice of the Lord. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, He also has rejected you from being king. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, listen to me, the word of the Lord, the Word of God is our foundation. If we come to a place where we reject the Word, He will reject us as King. Are you still hearing me? Become extremely quiet in this church. I hope you hear my heart when I share this with you this morning. If we continue to reject the Word of the Lord, the simple fact of the matter is that we will not become that King that He has in store for us. We need to know that the devil has plans for us. The enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life abundant. And we need that abundant life. But then we need to realize it's the Malachites and we need to deal with those Malachites. Verse 32, jump with me there. Verse 32. Then Samuel said, bring Agag, the king of Amalekites, here to me. Bring that king, that, that Agag, that devil, bring him here. So Agag came to him cautiously. And Agag said, that Surely the bitterness of death is past. So what is he saying? He's kind of, we are now friends, are we not? The bitterness, you're not bitter with me anymore. I know I've killed many of your people, but come on. The bitterness of death has passed, I'm sure it has. You see, that's what the devil wants to do with us. He wants us to be friends with him. He wants us to be okay with him. But Samuel said, as your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel had Agag in pieces before the Lord of the Lord. Man was a bunch of rough guys this. This prophet Samuel, he took no nonsense. 
Maybe I should bring me a sword to church next time. <laughs> when we have one somewhere. Oh, there's one hanging in my office actually. <coughs> and you see, when we spiritualize this, we, we realize that the sword speaking about here, yeah, not a real sword, it's the word of God. And with the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, we destroy the agag in our lives. Because when the agag tells you that you are no good and you are a headache, you, can, you will accomplish nothing in life, God is saying, you're going to destroy that line. Take the word of this, take the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, and kill that agag in your life. Say to that addiction, say to that liar, you are a liar. I am the head and not the tail. I am destined for much more than I'm stuck at the moment. You have not reached your final destination yet. So you still have a choice to make. You can still decide if you want to stay on the same journey or do we want to make decisions in life to bring us to a better place. I want to jump with me and we are going to read in the next, the last chapter of this book. We are at chapter 15. Let's go to the very last one, verse, chapter 31. Let us see what does the end of Saul look like. And somebody just help me quickly. What was the bottom line of what God said to Saul that he should be doing? Destroy who? The Amalekites. That's what he said. Destroy the Amalekites. That's what he said to him. Kill or be killed. Make sure we destroy the things in our life that is trying to pull us back from not reaching that destination that God has for us. Verse 31. Last chapter in uh, the book of 1 Samuel. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. And the men of Israel fled from the Philistines. This is now another war, another time. Time has now passed. And now they're busy with another war. They are now fighting the Philistines. Not even the Amalekites. They were supposed to all have been destroyed. Remember, he didn't kill them all. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. And the men of Israel fled from the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. Then the Philistines followed hard after Saul and his sons. And the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkeshua, Saul's son. Sons. All three sons were killed. The battle became fierce against Saul. The archers hit him with the arrows, and he severe, was severely wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and thrust it through, thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and thrust me through and abuse me. You see, he was busy dying, he was wounded, Saul. And uh, when he was wounded, he asked his armor bearer, rather kill me, because if the Philistines find me wounded like this, they will, they will abuse me. They will do bad things to me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took the sword and he fell on it. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul, his three sons, his armor bearer, all his men died together that same day. Is that sad? That's not actually the truth, the whole truth, but nothing but the truth. Because there's a fine print that we don't see yet, which I want to show you. Just page with me one page on and go to... Wait, 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 before you go on, read verse 8 with me. Verse 8 says, So it happened the next day when the Philistines came to strip the slain, and they found Saul and his three sons, fallen on Mount Gilboa, and they cut off his head and stripped off his armor. You see, when they chop off his head, Saul's head, it means I'm taking your authority away. You have no authority anymore. And they strip off his armor, which means all your protection is gone. We're taking your authority, we're taking your protection, because you are dead. And that is the plan that the devil has for us. He want, they, the devil, the enemy, wants to strip your authority. He wants to strip your protection. But we can make a choice this morning to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not going to allow that. We're going to utterly destroy the Amalekites in our lives, which God wants us to do. I want you to go into the next chapter. This is now the second book of Samuel. Just zoom in on how he died, really. 
So what we read there was the highlights. Let now read the fine print between the highlights. How it really happened. The first chapter, verse 1 of chapter 1, 2 Samuel. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had stayed two days in Ziklag. On the third day, behold, it happened that a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. So it was when he came to David that he fell to the ground and prostrated himself. And David said to him, Where have you come from? So he said to him, I've escaped from the camp of Israel. Then David said to him, How did the matter go? Please tell me. And he answered, The people have fled from the battle. Many of the people are fallen and dead. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, are also dead. Then David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead? Then the young man who told him said, As I happened by chance to be on Mount Balboa, there was Saul leaning on his spear. And indeed, the chariots and most horsemen followed hard after him. Now when he looked behind him, he saw me and called me. And I answered, Here I am. We see when Saul, the previous reading we did, when Saul fell on his sword, he simply said that he died. And his armor bearer died. But the truth is he didn't die immediately. He was, he was bleeding, but he wasn't dead. Then he said, and he said to me, Who are you? So I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said to me, Please stand over me and kill me, for anguish has come upon me, but my life still remains in me. So I stood over him and I killed him, because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. And I took the crown that was on his head, and the bracelet that was on his arm, and I brought them here to my Lord. And I rewind again, Who are you? So asked him. So I answered him, I am an Amalekite. Now, was, is it true that God said to Saul, kill all the Amalekites? Yes. Utterly destroy them. Kill them. Make sure there's not one left. Not a donkey of them, not an oxen, not a sheep, nothing of the Amalekites. He did not do it. And who was the one who killed him at the end of the day? An Amalekite. What am I saying to you this morning? When we are strong, hear me now. You've missed everything thus far. Hear me now. When we are strong, we think it's okay for us to have stuff in our lives. To allow certain sinful things, we think it's okay because we can fight it. Because I'm strong. But hear what I'm saying to you this morning. If you allow that Amalekite to remain in your life, the day will come that you are wounded. When you are emotional in a good place, in a strong place. And then that Amalekite will appear again. It will come back to kill you if you did not deal with it. When you are strong. When you are strong, you need to keep these things out of your life. You need to make decisions and put measures in place. If there's friends in your life, I need to say this to somebody. If there's friends in your life and they are dragging you down to continually do things that you know God hates, you need to get rid of those friends. You need to keep them out of your life. Because the day will come that you will be weak. The day will come that you cannot still stand strong. And then that the Malachite will come back to will kill you. It will drag you down. It will destroy you. If you do not destroy that. So I'm saying to you this morning, as a family and as the pastor of this house, do not be so stupid. Do not be so arrogant to think you will always be as strong as you are now. And you can always be the person that will be like Samson and jump up every time when they say the first things are upon you. The day will come that you will. The day will come that you feel alone. When things happen in your life and you are not strong, and then the devil will come back again, and the Malachite will kill you. So what am I saying to you this morning? As I was speaking with you, things came up in your mind. Things were brought to the surface by the Holy Spirit as I was speaking. And the things that you are allowing in your life that you know, there's God, there's me, there's this thing. It's separating me from the fullness of God in my life. That thing is the Amalekite. The thing that you thought about. Maybe I must get rid of this thing. That is the one you need to kill. Right there, this morning, get out the sword and watch out. So that we don't get man. We don't get those things. So that we know we have committed to Christ. I'm going to ask you this morning. Do you not want to make a commitment to Christ this morning? 
I say, Lord Jesus, you gave your all. In fact, you died on the cross. You died, you gave everything. So that I can live a life of a Malachite free. If I can live a life that says abundance, victory. That's what God wants from us. The ultimate plan of the devil is to destroy you. He hates you. The devil hates you. You need to know that. He's not your friend. And when he brings things into your life that seems to gonna improve your life, it's to at the end of the day to kill you. Because you see, the devil already knows that he will burn in hell forever. He's trying to get people to join him in hell because he knows that's what's that's, that's going to happen. But God says, I want you to be in heaven. I want you to be saved. I want you to live your best life here right now on earth. To become that person that I know you're supposed to become. So let's say this morning, Lord, I'm saying goodbye to you in that dance. It's done. I'm done. I'm done. Well, I'm strong. Well, I can still make a decision. Let's make that. Pray with me. Father God, as we sit before you this morning, we have heard the word. Only thing now to be made is to act on the word. And therefore this morning we come before you, Father God, and we know that so often we, we fall into habits that seem to not be destroying us now. That we seem to have, okay, we can handle them. Now this morning we heard that if we don't handle them, at the end of the day when we are weak, they will come to kill us. And like the end of Saul was, oh God, we don't want our head to be like this. We don't want to lose our head and our armor. We don't want to lose our authority or our protection. And therefore this morning we come before you and we plead forgiveness. We plead another chance to repent. And when we repent this morning we know that you are a faithful God, that you will cleanse us from all iniquity. You will once again give us another chance to say, Lord, here I am. I want to serve you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. Lord, I pray that right now, at this moment, at this moment, that you will reach deep into our hearts. Reveal to us the Amalekites in our lives. Reveal to us right now in Jesus' name. I want you to just remain seated like you are with your eyes closed. Just talk to God for a little while. And I want you to, if you know there's a Malachite in your life that you need to deal with, then you just want to stand up where you are and say, I'm making a decision this morning. I'm killing this Malachite. I'm drawing the sword of the Spirit to kill this thing in my life that doesn't belong here. That is you this morning, just where you are. Just stand on your feet. Just stand on your feet. Just stand on your feet if you know you need to kill that Amalekite. Stand up. Don't have the guts to stand up. Don't be like Saul and blame others. Don't be like Saul and say, but it's the people who made me do it. That's you this morning. Please stand up. On your feet this morning to show the devil to show to a gap that I'm standing up, I'm choosing life, I'm choosing Jesus, I'm choosing holiness, I'm choosing holiness this morning. I don't want to remain in darkness, I want to be a person that truly serves the living God. That's you this morning, please stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand up and be counted. Thank you Jesus. Do you want to join these people standing? We stand before we pray. We stand before we pray. If you stand this morning, what you are really saying is to say that I belong to God this morning. That I'm making a decision to say that from this day on, I'm going to live a holy life. I will get rid of the things that is a uh, an Agag that the Amalekites are trying to drag me into. I'm getting rid of it. I'm making a decision this morning. Say, Lord, I'm going to live a holy life. Thank God for every person standing this morning. If you are standing this morning, want to start speaking with God. Repent. Repent means, Lord, I turn away from my wicked way. I turn away from darkness. I turn towards the light. I'm making a turnabout in my life. I repent before you.
Lord, I pray that you will help me this morning. Father, as we stand before you this morning, we know that the enemy has come to kill, steal, destroy. And he's trying to do that in our lives. But thank you this morning for an opportunity like this where we can stand before you and we can say, here I am, Lord. I repent before you. I turn away from my wicked ways. I want to truly be obedient to you, Father God. Lord, my, our prayer this morning is that as we stand before you, that you will change our hearts on the inside. Holy Spirit, just come. Please. Just come. Cleanse us. Cleanse us. Wash us with the precious blood of the Lamb. Cleanse us. Cleanse us from all wickedness. We are guilty before you, Lord God. We are guilty. But we thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all iniquity. And therefore this morning, we plead forgiveness and we accept your forgiveness. We say thank you that you cleanse us. And from this day on, Father God, we're going to serve you with everything that we have in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Just, just remain this presence a little bit more. But just, just lift your, your, your hands to Him. Just lift up your hands for a moment there if you are standing. Just surrender to Him. Just surrender. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Jesus. 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 Thank you. Oh, Lord, what son of a Christ. Many, 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 many moons ago. 
said, I left my load at Calvary, where Jesus died for you and me. Does anybody know? Anybody ever say that thing? <laughs> I'm just over 50 and I remember it. I left my load at Calvary where Jesus died for you and me. And then there came a sound, uh, 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 and then there came a uh, be so sweet. When I left my load of sin at Jesus' feet, I left my load at Calvary where Jesus died for you and me. And then there came a piece of sweet when I left my load of sin at Jesus' feet. Man, I'm going to bring that one back to the church. I'm going to bring that one back. We didn't have a band that would have pulled them up right now and said, come on, let's do that one. I left my load at Calvary. Come on, you can do it. When Jesus died for you and me, and then they came a piece of speed. When I left my load of sin at Jesus' feet, Brother Brown, you sound like you can see, Brother. Can you get you up there? <laughs> Hallelujah. May God bless you. I love you. I really do. I love you. I love you. I love you. My heart, my heart's desire is to see that you become everything that God wants you to become. Everything that God wants you to become. So let's do that. I've asked my gorgeous blonde to do the announcements for us this morning. And uh, she will do that. And she's going to take up the offering. And I am going to Westerberg now. May God bless you. It's great to have been with you. I need to go share this with those guys as well. A gang out of our lives. Yes. No place for A gang because we are serving God. Just a very important announcement before I go. Next weekend, there's actually not a weekend, on Wednesday night, there's a massive 10 crusade starting in Westernburg. We are about 10 churches that came together in Westernburg and organized this 10 crusade. We have an evangelist coming all the way out of the Western Cape and with a 1,200 seat tent. We put up on Wednesday on the school grounds. It's going to be an awesome event for Westernburg. Uh, next Sunday, in fact, will be the churches will close and start taking in this event. Uh, and we will all go to the tent. Not, the, not you guys, but you're going to come here. Unless you want to go to the tent on that side. But next Sunday, we have church here. But in Westernburg is a major outreach. Please pray that God will set people free. There's a major drug problem in Westernburg. And we are pushing that A gang back. We say to the A gang, take your melancholy and it's a word I would like to use when I cross this. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. Let's get this. Get this up. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. How many Malachites in our lives? Amen. Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Yes. That's good. I'm privileged to give you the announcements this morning. Um, from, because you all know it's school holidays, so there will, won't be any uh, kids' church from this Sunday onwards until the end of the holiday. And um, also the cycle classes, they will still be, and that is at 1830, um, 1630, so that's why I need my glasses, 1630 uh, uh, this afternoon. The session Monday evenings at 6, grief share Tuesday night at 6 as well. There's also no riot youth um, for the rest of the holiday. and. Um, we in need for sound engineers. A sound engineer, someone that can help us with the sound there at the back. If you have a knowledge of sound, please, we need you. We need to serve. Um, if we want to be part of, of a family, we need to share and we need to serve together. Isn't that true? Yes. We need to serve. And I want to serve you and, and you want to serve one another. We want to serve one another. So please, if you have some knowledge of sound, come on you young dudes, man. You all know how to work sound. Isn't it true? We know, we all people, we, we're not so clued up with all the technology. So we need some vibrant young men that knows about sound. So if you know about something about sound, please come to... Um, uh, um, the office or uh, beer or uh, 
Melinda, please give your name so that we can train you. We need someone that can really help serving one another. I hope really there's someone that will come out for this. And then, uh, in general, um, the banking details for the tithing will be up there. And at this point, I also just want to take up the offering. You know, the best part of worshipping is with our money. It's, it's to give something that's touching my life. Touching um, where, where it really it hurts. Um, it's by serving and worshipping with something that I can give to God. And I really want to encourage you to serve and to worship with your offering and your time this morning. As you can all see when you came in, did you, did you notice this is, there's a change there outside? Wow, yes! There's new painting there. And it cost money. It cost a lot of money. Um, and we really want to motivate and challenge you if you please come and help us um, with the building fund. I uh, hope the building fund is a different. Is a bank details of the building fund. Um, if I can say to you, the, how much do you think the paving is going to cost the church? Sixty-two thousand. Sixty-two thousand, so that we can walk on. You know, with a woman with a high heels, there's nothing as bad as when we walk. And our heels get stuck in the mud. So we want some paving to walk on. We want to put nice um, tables and chairs outside that we can have a nice fellowship outside. So it's gonna, everything costs money. So I really want to motivate you. Please just do some digging and worship with your offerings and your tithing so that we can do the building fun we can we can do the stuff that we want to do. So we really we we challenge you. We know you can do it, so thank you for that. And at this moment we are also want to greet our viewers, our Facebook Facebook viewers. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with us. We really love you. We really appreciate you and be blessed. And now we're just gonna stand, we're gonna keep our hand, we took our Offering in our hands, we can stand.